Hey here, welcome to our tutorial. Today we will try to create this Instagram logo inside Microsoft Word. And as a base, we will start with our previous tutorial for drawing a super ellipse. We will use this shape for the logo itself. So I will start with my document where I already have this macro defined. You can get the macro from the description of this video. I will actually delete this shape, open the macros. We will not write any code today, but I will use this macro as a base for the shape. So I will edit the macro. And what I will do here is I'll probably make the ellipse or super ellipse a little bit bigger. So I will change the size to maybe 200. And just because the offset is not a percentage, but just a real number, I will use a half of this size. So that's 100. Then I will press play. I will play the macro, run the macro, and I get this shape. I will probably paste the real Instagram logo somewhere uh, close to this one. I have to change the alignment so I can wrapping so I can move it to the right side and I will start playing with colors. So the obvious thing is to change the outline to no outline and let's somehow try to use uh, or create this kind of uh, rainbow like effect. Actually before creating this rainbow let's try to find the color which is used for most of the background and it's kind of like this dark pink one. So let's open the shape fill drop down menu change set more fill colors and we will start with maybe this some of those dark pink colors like maybe this one i kind of like this one seems to be quite similar to the one on the right side then i will continue by copying and pasting this shape so control c control v and moving it to the same position and we will overlay a few more shapes with transparent gradients to get this effect so i will right click and select format shape and in here for the fill itself, I will change the fill to gradient fill. And you can see I already have the fill predefined, but let's start from scratch. Let's start from this bottom left gradient, which is looks like almost like a radial gradient. So let's change this to radial gradient from linear to gradial. And let's set the direction from left bottom corner like this. We want this gradient to be going from yellow to orange. So I will set the first stop to be yellow and it's just a standard yellow color for now. And the second stop will be orange, which is also a standard orange color for now. The third one will be orange as well. But for this one, I will change the transparency all the way up to 100%. And we are already getting some similar result as, as we are seeing here on the Instagram logo. Obviously for the Instagram logo, it's a little bit more opposite to the right side. We cannot move the gradient inside the shape inside board so we have to just live with this gradient what i can probably do is i can probably also lower the transparency also for the second stop maybe to like 30 percent or so and it also seems like that the yellow color is kind of desaturated so i will open the color drop down for the yellow color and maybe i will select one of the yellow colors which is more to the white so this like this one i may also move it more to the right side so it's a little bit more visible I kind of like, like this result for this first gradient. So let's copy and paste the shape again and move it somehow to the same position as the previous shape. We don't need to be precise here. We will align everything later on. So let's continue with this blue gradient. So this type should be uh, linear and it already goes from top left corner. So I may just adjust the angle a little bit. So it's a little bit more tilted like this. Then I will change the first gradient stop color to be blue. And I will start with a default blue color. It's probably not visible in this video, but it's a light blue color. The second one will be like a pink or, or a violet one. Again, I will use a default color for now, also for the first step, but I may change those colors later on. Again, for the last step, I will set the transparency to 100%. And I will also maybe change the transparency for the second step to be maybe around 30 or so. I will move the first step more to the left so it's less visible. And I may change the color. You can see it's more to the dark blue. So I will open the drop down menu for more colors and maybe change it to some darker blue. Maybe maybe this one. Seems almost the same. Maybe for the second gradient stop, I may adjust the color as well. And at this, I will maybe move it more to the blue. So something in between violet and blue like this. And I think I kind of like this result. Obviously, we can play with the colors a lot more. We can maybe create a few more gradients or at least one more gradient going from the right side with like a pinkish color. But let's add those white shapes and see how it looks like. 
So in order to add the white shapes, I will again use the same macro, but this time I may change the anchor offset just because if I just run the macro like this, it's not doing anything. So let's do it. Uh, let's try it one more time. So if I run this macro and I can, I will change the fill to no fill and outline to white outline, some bold outline, like maybe, I don't know, 10 or so. If I resize it, you can holding the control shift key. You can see that the shape is a little bit different. You know, the outer shape is left for as well, but the shape, maybe I can make it a little bit less rounded. So I may change the uh, anchor offset to maybe just, I don't know, 85 or so. So if I run it again, you can immediately see that it's a little bit more rounded, actually not, not less rounded, but more rounded shape. Then I will resize it holding the shift and control key, making sure that it's being resized from the center like this. I will change the fill to no fill and outline to solid line being white color with maybe, I don't know, 10 or maybe even more, maybe like, I don't know, 14 or so, 14 seems fine. Then I will run the macro one more time and I'm doing this purely just so I don't have to properly align everything else and I may guess the number for almost like a circle which could be maybe around 60, let's see. Okay, this does look kind of like a circle, so I will again resize this with Ctrl and Shift keys pressed to be like this. Change the fill to no fill, our line to outline to white color, same width that is being 14, maybe I will use 12 instead of 14, a little bit lighter for this one as well. And as a final step, I will just copy this one, change the line to no, no line and fill to solid white line, uh, sorry, sorry, solid white fill. I will resize this to very small circle like this and move it to the right position, which is around here. And I think that we are almost done. You know, it's uh, the shape is a little bit different than the original logo, but I kind of like this more natural looking rounded shapes. And it's definitely much better looking than using the predefined rounded rectangle. What we can do is we can make sure that everything is aligned perfectly. So I will select selection pane, select those shapes. This is the first, second and third one used for the background. And I will select format ribbon and align everything to center and to middle. And seeing this picture, I may also for the second fill, I may also move one of those right steps more to the right. So it's more spread out like, like this. So it's more blending to the background. And I might actually use the, do the very same for the second gradient, move the violet stuff more to the right side. So it's more blended with the background. So there are no, it's not that obvious where the gradient stops and starts. Then I can, of course, group everything, add wrap shadow, do whatever else. And that's really it. Thanks for watching. Again, the macro to draw the super ellipse will be placed in the description of this video if you really want to know what's happening in the macro just please go check out my previous video thanks for watching